Hello, my name is Dot, and whether you are new or have worked with us before, we're glad to have you on the Artworks team. I'm sure you're eager to hop into your project, but before we can let you do that, we gotta take care of some important business. Artworks strives to create a fun and creative space, and one of the biggest facilitators of this environment is safety. So in this video, we're going to dive headfirst into the nitty gritty of... Artworks partners with OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, to ensure our workplaces are the best they can be. OSHA is the national regulatory agency which creates safety rules and guidelines to keep employees safe in the job. They make the rules, we enforce them. Don't shoot the messenger. These are there for your own good. To further emphasize the value we put into safe work practices, we have on-staff artists specifically trained to keep you safe. Let's do a quick introduction of the staff members who will help us meet that goal. First is the Lead Teaching Artist, or the LTA. This is your direct supervisor and the person who leads the project's execution, ensuring that the project is done on time. Your LTA will deliver important updates through the project, so make sure they have your most up-to-date contact information. Second is the Safety Coordinator. They are a member of the teaching staff and can be the LTA. This person ensures all on-site safety rules are followed. Additionally, the safety coordinator is first aid and CPR certified. If an emergency happens on site, they are there to support in addressing the emergency. Finally, the safety captain. The safety captain is on the artworks administrative team and supports project team training and onboarding. They also ensure each site has the proper safety equipment. Now that we've taken care of the introductions, we can finally dive into... All project sites will be equipped with one of these. These are posted so all team members can access emergency information. It lists all emergency contact information for your site, including who to call in case of a fire emergency, mental health emergency, and where to shelter in case of inclement weather, such as a tornado. We all recognize this number. If an emergency happens, let this be your guide in deciding your action. When in doubt, call 911. An emergency is any situation that requires immediate assistance from the police, fire department, or an ambulance. For example, a fire, a crime, a car crash, or a medical emergency. Check out your safety manual for a list on how to recognize these medical emergencies. If you aren't sure whether a situation is a true emergency, call 911 and let the dispatcher determine whether you need emergency help. When you call, use this acronym for information you should have prepared to give the dispatcher. S-A-N-D. Yes, SAND. Even though we don't live near a beach, this acronym is good to keep in mind. S. Situation. Provide the nature of the emergency. A. Area. Be able to give a precise location, including street address. N. Number. Make sure to include the phone number you're calling from. D. Details. Whether it be a physical description of a person committing a crime, a description of an injury, or a description of a fire, all of this is vital information for the responder to know. When an incident occurs that requires calling 911 or the police department, someone from the team must call your assigned project supervisor to report the incident immediately following the initial call to the authorities. All right, so let's talk about- ah! Come on, Quincy. Sorry. Ugh. What a perfect transition. I'm gonna go put some ice on this. We'll let someone else handle this segment. <laughs> Alrighty, everyone. First aid time. Your on-site safety coordinator is first aid trained. Seek them out for small cuts or scrapes. Here are the basic steps for tending to these. When met with a situation like this one, first apply pressure to the wound with a clean bandage or cloth. It helps to keep that part of the body elevated above the heart if possible. Once the bleeding subsides, clean the wound with an antiseptic, provided in your job site's fully stocked first aid kit. Finally, cover the wound with a sterile bandage. For anything requiring more than simple first aid, 
Seek professional services by calling 911. Next, we'll talk about- Excuse me? Uh, that's my job. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> ah. Who was that? I thought one of our teaching artists was gonna handle first aid. Anyway... Seems like a good a time as any to talk about unauthorized personnel. No one is allowed onto any job site without first being authorized and trained by Artworks. The same goes for other Artworks employees who are not stationed at your specific site. All unauthorized personnel must be removed from the job site immediately. Untrained individuals may only access the job site if they are escorted by a trained Artworks employee for a brief and specific purpose. Truth be told, this rule is so important to enforce because if it isn't followed, it can cause a whole mess of problems, including legal mumbo jumbo. Best to respect this rule. Should they choose to disclose, it is the responsibility of the employee to make any pre-existing health condition known to their manager, and accommodations can be made. We're here to help. Next, it is important to know that Artworks employees are required to document all work-related accidents and incidents in writing on the incident report, available from your safety coordinator. Incident reports should be discussed and signed by all the involved parties. In case of any sized fire, immediately call 911 and retreat away from the area in a timely, organized manner. Field trips will be coordinated by the teaching staff and a project supervisor. Minors will need a parent or guardian to sign a field trip form. Drivers must be 18 or older, have a valid driver's license, and need to ensure everyone in the car is wearing a seatbelt. Also, it should go without saying, but drivers can't use cell phones while driving and must never be under the influence of alcohol and or drugs. All drivers need to provide a copy of their driver's license to Artworks and be approved by the Artworks insurance carrier prior to being authorized for carpooling. We've covered a lot of information so far. Let's do a quick review. Question one, who in your team is first aid trained? Your on-site safety coordinator. They are trained to handle small cuts and scrapes. For anything requiring more than simple first aid, call 911 immediately. Question two, when calling 911, what do the letters in our safety acronym S-A-N-D stand for? S, situation or the nature of the emergency. A, area, a precise location. N, number, the phone number you are calling from. D, details. Any additional information the responder needs to know. Now let's talk about... What is PPE? For those unfamiliar, PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. We wear these to help keep ourselves and others safe while on the job site. Every Artworks employee or authorized person must wear the following each workday in order to be granted access to the job site. We recommend dressing like your Jackson Pollock in his studio. Get ready to get messy. Shirt. You gotta wear one. Whether it be a long or short sleeve shirt, tank top or sweatshirt, like your mom always said, dress for the weather. Pants, shorts, or skirt. Enough said. Though, do keep in mind if you're going to be up on scaffolding. When working outside or in the studio, please wear closed-toed shoes with laces or Velcro and flat-gripping soles. Light-up shoes, optional. Gloves. Artworks offers fabric gloves or disposable nitrile gloves by request to employees who experience skin sensitivity to any paint or solvent in the workplace. If you need a pair, reach out to the lead teaching artist. Now let's hop into my favorite topic, proactive self-care. We here at Artworks put a priority in self-care. It's our hope that you will be proactive in taking care of yourself prior to the start of the workday. Here are some things you can do to make sure you feel your best on the job. I know it can be tempting, but make sure you get a good night's rest. Eat some breakfast, you'll need the energy. The food you put in your body sets the tone for the whole day. On that note, Pack a lunch. We aren't going to tell you what you should or shouldn't eat. That's just not our job, though we do care about your health. 
on those days when the sun is shining and even still when it's hiding behind the clouds, wear sunscreen. If we can speak candidly for a moment, if you aren't feeling well enough to get the job done, whether it be physical or mental, let us know. As a member of the team, looking out for one another and encouraging safe and healthy self-care is one of the best things we can do to make a difference. Likewise, please don't overwork yourself. You should only be on the clock during your approved work schedule. Before you lift a heavy object, you should know where the object needs to go and how you'll get it there. When lifting from the floor, stand as close to the object as possible and kneel, resting one knee on the floor. Don't lift from a standing position with your waist bent or your knees locked. In general, your feet should be shoulder width apart and your back should be straight. Lift with your legs and don't twist or bend. When lifting a really heavy object, have a spotter help you lift or guide you around the job site. If you end up straining something, let someone know and take a break from your task. For serious injuries, call 911 or reference the emergency plan. Artworks has a zero tolerance policy for tobacco use and weapon carrying on any job site. Regarding weapons, using work supplies or any other material as such is a no-no, but I think that's a given. Additionally, impairment by drugs or alcohol on the job site is dangerous for you and those around you. Please don't do it. If you suspect a coworker is impaired, it's not snitching, it's being safe. Please contact your project's respective supervisor. Phew, that was another hefty section. Let's review a few points to make sure you got all of that. What does PPE stand for? PPE is our shorthand for Personal Protective Equipment. Requirements vary by site, but usually include equipment like protective eyewear, hard hats, and safety vests. One more. What are some things you can do to ensure you're practicing proactive self-care before and during work? Proactive self-care can include anything from getting a good night's sleep to eating at least a little something before coming into work. Make sure to check in with your mental and physical health. During the workday, ensure you are doing all you can to keep yourself feeling your best. Pack a lunch, drink water, wear sunscreen. Now, back to the video. We're at the home stretch. Let's talk about... Everyone is responsible for their own mess. Artworks will provide each worksite with a trash bin and liners. Daily housekeeping is expected and final site cleanup is required. We are dedicated to making Cincinnati a beautiful place and leaving our space messy is counterintuitive to that goal. It is a requirement that paint be disposed of at the end of each day using the wastewater disposal method. The teaching staff will train you as needed. Paint disposal is only allowed to be performed by a member of the teaching staff, but it's still good to know. In case of a spill, deal with it immediately to maintain a safe worksite and prevent permanent damage and alert the project supervisor if outside help is necessary. I mean, say you were an art student who needed to work on an abstract painting project and say that supposedly you happen to have a twin sister. And then say you decided to make the painting with her because it'd be cute and get you art brownie points, but it would require you to go to her college to do the painting safely. And this is crazy and definitely didn't happen, but let's pretend like you were carrying the paint cans from your car and as you were about to cross the street, you accidentally dropped a paint can. The orange paint gets everywhere and all you can do is just stand there looking like an absolute fool while people are getting out of their classes, pass you by and pull out their phones to document the fool that you are. You wait and you wait and then a gardener drives by in a golf cart, takes one look at the spill size, and tells you that they're going to have to get the power washer. Now your mistake is immortalized in the concrete and there's nothing you can do about it, but that's totally crazy and would never happen. <laughs> Just uh, clean up your spills, please. Extension cords and GFCIs, these things, are available for projects that need them. It is up to the project manager to inspect and ensure the extension cord is safe to use. Certain power tools are available to those that need them. Trained apprentices over the age of 18 may use power tools, but must be heavily supervised by a trained member of the teaching staff. 
When operating any power tool, always read the manufacturer's instructions of the tool in order to operate it safely. Last but not least, let's talk about the exciting subject of... All right, so for safety and legal reasons, once you have completed this training, you are required to read the safety manual in full. I may be biased, but I think it's quite a thrilling read. We've reviewed the key points, but it's your responsibility to understand all of these bulky policies. Once you've finished reading it, please sign and return the last page of the manual to us. Thanks! If you're new here, I know it may feel overwhelming. There's a lot of important information after all. Eventually, you'll get the hang of it and safety will become second nature to you. You're not alone. Your Artworks family is here to support you. Thanks so much for listening and have fun! Let's create!